Hey girl, hey, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Misha. Thank you guys for joining me yet again for another review. We are back with a brand new review for Ready to Love Season 7, Episode 4. If you are new here, then welcome. I give lighthearted reviews with a little bit of laughter and a little bit of shade and a whole lot of detail. If you're back for a second or third time, then welcome back. Y'all, please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Share with a friend. Hit that notification bell so that you will be updated each and every time I upload a video. Now, child, let's get into it if we gonna get into it. When the episode first opens up, the guys are going fishing. Blue set the whole thing up. And so Blake is asking about the connections and how the guys are vibing with the women. So Mark Anthony said that Mercedes is a connection, but he He's still fishing, okay? Pun intended. So while they're fishing, Tommy shows up. I'm so proud of you, Tommy, wearing your casual fishing clothes, honey, because we know he loves a suit and a turtleneck. I'm so, I'm so, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I was so proud of Tommy. I said, look at Tommy in his casual clothing. Okay, Leisha. So he tells the men that they need to explore the ladies' hearts and minds. So I set up a Miami yacht party. Oh, Lord. So then Tommy tells them that one lady will be eliminated. Moving forward. In the next scene, Mark Anthony is going on a date with Jeffrey. They're doing some mechanical bull riding. So he went first, right? And he was riding the bull. She's like, you're embarrassing the country girl. Ma'am, please drop this chick, okay? I don't know what countryside you are on, honey, but it's given very much city girl, okay? It really is. You couldn't ride that horse and you couldn't ride that bull. And I was thinking to myself, girl, well, I mean, it's kind of giving us a little preview of what's going to go down. <laughs> girl, you're going to have to ride that bull, honey. So anywho, they're on their date. Across town, Blue is going out with Marcia. And she said that Blue was the most caring and authentic man that she's met. So she sits down with Blue and she's telling Blue that, you know, I don't do the outdoors. I don't like hiking. I don't like fishing. He was like, what? You don't like fishing? She was like, no, I mean, why do y'all want to fish anyway? And he was like, well, you know, he was trying to explain nature to her and being on the water. And she was just like, no, I don't do no fishing. I don't want to put no bait on no hook. I don't want to do none of that. So he asked her about going hiking. He was like, what if you, you know, I wanted to get a cabin and, and go up in the woods. She was like, nope, what we going to do up there? Like, I don't want to do that either. Marcia seems like she isn't willing to compromise in relationships just based off that one little small part. Like I'm not outdoorsy either, but we can find some things to do. I mean, try new things, especially if you're with your partner, you have to be compromising. And she was like, I'm scared of animals. Child, Blue is ready for the chick. Y'all hear me? Over on the other side, Jeffrey is asking Mark Anthony how he feels about blending families since she does have kids. So he was like, well, you know, because of my background, I've been a part of a blended family growing up and I love my siblings. So, you know, I'm down for it. So she said, but you do want to have kids, right? He said, yeah, I do want to have kids of my own. And when she was asking him that, I was thinking, didn't Jeffrey say she didn't want any more kids? Or am I mistaken? I don't know, but I don't know how this is going to work. And I don't see it working really me, but it could. So after their date was over in the confessional, she was like, yeah, he shot way up on the list after our date. Jeffrey. If you don't drop that Michael Jackson voice, he drop, he's very high up on the list. I love everything about what's going on between me and Mike, Mark Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord, I hate it. He said in his confessional that he loves their date. Okay. And it's going to be complicated because he's never dated a woman with kids. So he wants to ease into it and walk this thing down. But I don't see how it's going to work. Back over with Blue and Marcia, they're still chatting it up, still having a good time. And in the confessional, he said he liked his date with Marcia, but her do's and don'ts are a red flag. So then she was like, yeah, and I really don't like to date a man with kids either. Like, I don't want to overcomplicate my life if I don't have to. Now, I think the way she's wording it is wrong. So we can already tell that the two of them are not a match. Now you saying to someone, I don't date people that have kids. I don't want to overcomplicate my life if I don't have to. By you telling him that, it could be interpreted as you see children as a hindrance, okay? And for somebody that has a child, they're going to be looking at you like, girl, me and my children are a package deal. So you saying that you don't deal with men that have kids, that's majority of the people that you're going to meet. Not during this process, but I'm just saying in general. But Blue, you can go and pack it up, honey. You and Marcia are not a match. <laughs> 
It was given Marcia is just there for the free food. Okay. Moving forward. It's the day of the yacht party. Baby Tommy clean. Do y'all hear me? He got that powder blue suit on. I said, okay, Tommy. So all of the singles are there and they're about to board the ready to love boat. So Tommy tells them that Andre tested positive. So he decided to back out of the entire experience. I'm like, so he decided to step away from the process, the entire process because he tested positive. Is he not going to get better? Cause I remember somebody on another season, the girl who used to do the, the runway walk every time she would walk through. And she reminded me of Brandy from the Miami season previously. I cannot remember her name, but she also tested positive. She recuperated, quarantined for a little bit, and she was back in that thing. So something tells me that the numbers were not numbering. So every season, there's got to be an emergency. Remember last season, it was the guy couldn't stick around because he had a family emergency. Then the season before that, this person had that. So this season is he tested positive. I'm like, okay, so he was the sacrificial lamb child. Moving forward. So both Jeffrey and Cynthia were very sad about Mr. Tendril not returning. Oh, well, I hope the best for him and Tendril and get well soon, child. So then we get on the yacht, okay, because this way it's about to go down. So we get on the yacht and Cynthia and Anthony, they sit down, they're talking and they haven't, hadn't got a chance to talk to each other because, you know, Cynthia had her sights set on Andre and his curl. So they sit down, they start talking. She's telling him that she's always said that if a man has a child and it doesn't change him, then nothing is going to change him. She said her kids changed her life. She's been doing everything to make sure they're on the right path and they're doing things in life that are going to make them successful. So he was like, yeah, you know, I have a daughter and I put her first. I put a lot of pride and attention into her and, you know, letting her know that I'm her first love and to know that this is how she's supposed to be treated. She's supposed to be treated a certain type of way. And I thought that was sweet, but I do like Anthony because he seems genuine. Even when the guys were choosing Mercedes as their top because of her buddy pass, he was like, I can pay for my own flight. I just like Mercedes because I like Mercedes. So I think Anthony might be a genuine guy. So Cynthia says she was impressed with the conversation they had. Now their conversation seemed like, you know, getting to know each other and it seemed genuine, but I don't know if I see a love connection between these two. I don't see a, collo- a love connection between none of these people. If we really want to be real. Moving forward. Over on the other side of the boat, Jeffrey and Mark Anthony still a little hug. They're over there hugging and whatnot. So Blake pulls Susu to the side and he's like, you know, I just think that you're a really great, great lady. And, you know, you've really been holding it down. So he gives her a bracelet. Child, she's going to be ready to get married. A nickname and a bracelet. And I feel like he only bought her that bracelet to make sure that she always saves him and that he makes it to the end. And he ain't fooling me. I don't trust it. It seems a bit strategic to me. Now, I don't know if it does to anybody else, but baby, that bracelet gave absolutely nothing. And when she was like, oh my gosh, I wasn't expecting a gift. He was like, yeah, you're welcome. Awkward. So then they pan over to Tony and Morgan and they're talking and she's telling him how much of a smooth talker he is. And she was like, yeah, I just don't feel like he gives me the attention that I crave. That's what she said in the confessional. So then she looks at him and she's like, your husband material. He was like, I appreciate that. Now, Morgan, what has he done? What has he exhibited? What traits has he shown you for him to be husband material? I think Morgan's picker is off because how is he husband material if you don't trust him to only be interested in you? I just thought, child, I'm so confused, honey. She's like, yeah, you're a high commodity. Everybody want my baby and everybody want my baby and you want everybody. He said, no, I don't want it. You think I'm going around saying that I want everybody? Like I'm, I'm in everybody's face. She was like, well, I don't know. He was like, well, that's the problem. You don't know. So in the confessional, he said, you know, I just wish that Morgan was a little bit more confident. Like I want something that flows smoothly, AKA I want to be able to run game. She's not dumb enough. (laughs) She ain't dumb enough, honey. Tony is full of game and Morgan can see it. But she has her blinders on because for some reason, as soon as he says, said he likes to pray, then all of a sudden she's allowing him to pray on her. I don't trust it. Morgan, I'm speaking directly to you, honey. Always go with your first mind. He can't be trusted, honey. He gives mall kiosk jewelry salesmen. It's real slimy and grimy, child. I don't trust it. 
moving forward so in her confessional she said you know i just feel like he neglects me and he doesn't pay any attention to me well girl that sounds like husband material he neglects you doesn't pay attention to you you think he's talking to everything in a skirt you are right he is husband material now you see how stupid that sound morgan get it together girl i really think you have some insecurities as beautiful as you are i really think you are still an insecure young lady on the inside like i don't know what that is or what that's about but tony does not husband material make girl goodbye so then all the singles are sitting around right so corvea finds a bowl of fun questions so the first question said who would be the best kisser it was cousin skeeter aka demario he started licking his tongue out and whatnot i was like well put that tongue aside honey so then mark anthony pulls give a foot massage to the person you have the strongest connection with so he was like i ain't gonna lie to y'all i'm gonna give it to two people so he went over to try and rub jeffrey's feet honey i don't know what was going on he tried to rub her foot but he was rubbing her heels it was a whole fool so then he went over to mercedes tried to rub her foot and she was like you can suck my toes while you at it i said girl not your toes honey so then they asked who were the three sexiest people there morgan pulled that okay she pulled that card so she gonna say Lyndon, marcia and herself i could tell that that boiled tony's blood he could not stand for her to say Lyndon. Now, we all know that she did not want to pick Lyndon. The only reason why she chose Lyndon was to humble Tony, and she ain't fooling me, okay? Because I'm just looking at him, and I'm just like, girl, say what now? Anywho, uh, Tony, you better pray, honey. Get in front of the enemy. Shout out to David. Moving forward. Uh, Lyndon, don't get too excited, honey. You were a ploy, a plot and a scheme to talk set up to come at Tony with the bush. <laughs> So don't think that you are the sexiest man on this boat, honey. Wearing them clothes look like they came out the hamper, child. So then Jeffrey chose a card and they asked, who is your strongest connection? And she said, Mark Anthony. And then he got up and kissed her. I was like, okay, that's a little forward. Like, do we know each other in that way? I don't know. I got my eye on Mark Anthony. He's giving me, I want to play the field. He's giving me, I'm here for a good time, not a long time. Like some about it is just not, it's not sitting right in my spirit. So Demario felt the kind of way after that kiss. He was like, ooh, that's a complete turnoff. The fact that she kissed him. For me, it wasn't a turnoff in regards to Jeffrey because she was just blindsided by it. I mean, she could have hit the Matrix like Marcia did Lyndon, but she didn't. I think if I were in the lady's shoes, it would be a turnoff for me as far as Mark Anthony is concerned. Because like, sir, why are you just putting your mouth on this lady, honey? Say what now? If I was Mercedes, I would be like, nah, I'm good. So Demario and Corvea, they go over to the side, they're talking. And so she asked how he felt about his connections talking to other men. Girl, he don't like it. He and his feelings right now, okay? You just can't see him. So he said, you know, I feel like if they're for me, then they're for me. He said his connections are Corvea and Jeffrey, but Jeffrey isn't giving him any attention. So he's going to get to know Corvea better. So she brought up him being close to his dad. And Demario said that his dad is his backbone. He was swim. To wherever he is just to save him everything that he's ever learned was because of his dad this is the first time that i've seen corvea try to get to know the man and not the wallet i really enjoyed her conversation with demario now granted he seems a little bit preoccupied in the mind at all times i don't know i can't really get a read off of him but i was happy to see that she was trying to get to know him so she says she feels the exact same way about her mom you know, her mom pushed her to get out of the house. She pushed her to be her best. And she said growing up, she grew up in a lower income neighborhood with a lack of resources. And her parents worked hard to give her everything that she has. And that explains it. That explains it for me. That explains why she's so fixated on finances. She grew up not having much and doesn't want a repeat of it. That's what I gathered from it. And like I said, I can't get a read on Demario. So I don't know if he's really here for Corvea or not. But... I don't know. It, it just seems like everybody just want to stay on the show. Just stay on the show, child. Different seasons, same BS. Moving forward. So Jeffrey and Mark Anthony are talking, right? So Blake pulls Jeffrey to the side to ask her about what Susu said. So they go upstairs. And so he proceeds to say that he was hurt by what she said. And she's like, what did I say? So he being all evasive. She's like, if you're hurt or disturbed, why are aren't why are you hurt or disturbed like give me some context listen to me if you pulled her to the side to so-called 
confront her about what she said then say what it is that she said and I know she knows what she said okay because I know people are going to be like well Jeffrey know what she said why she asking him what he I want to know what you know because Susu could have put some stank on it okay she could have judged it up honey I don't know what she said she could have put words in her mouth so for me if you're going to come sit in front of me and you want to confront me about something then be a man say exactly what it is that you're confronting me about why even bring it to me if you're not going to say what you're upset about so she's like, well, can you tell me why you're hurt? He's like, I prefer not to get into it. Let me tell you something. When he would have said, I prefer not to get into it. I would have said, me too. I would prefer not to get into it either. And I would have got right on up and sashayed away. She was like, so you're so hurt, but you can't tell me what was said. She's like, why are you talking to me? Like, why are we having this conversation right now? He said, you know what? I don't know. Let's just leave it alone. Blake is a weirdo, honey. And if y'all don't see it, I don't know what to tell you moving forward so then they pan over to tony he's over there talking to jonique ready to waste her time honey because morgan called Lyndon sexy and he ain't fooling me so tony asks her if she's ready for a relationship and she tells him about her ex and her ex you know putting her through something not being ready for what she was ready for so they parted ways and she starts to get real emotional right because she really wants to find her one she was like you know you start to lose hope starting to wonder if you're ever going to find your person and you know she just feels like coming and doing this process gives her a little bit of hope that there's somebody out there for her so while she getting emotional he just looking at him just looking so then he was like you're an incredible woman look what you're doing to a brother got me feeling away look what you're doing to a brother boy gone y'all see he never once tried to console her he got up and hit her with that one arm hug I was like, boy, if you don't go on, sit down, honey. It was not sincere for me. And I want y'all to look at the difference between when Cynthia cried and Andre and his tendril was consoling her as opposed to Tony sitting here with Joe just looking at her and then instead of him talking about what it is she said to let her know she's been seen and she's been heard, he starts with the game. Look what you doing to a brother. <laughs> look how you got a brother feeling. Absolutely not huge red flag honey flag on the play mm -mm, mm -mm, mm. side note i also do not think that joe is completely over that ex and that is okay i don't feel like she's all the way over that ex though joe i'm i don't know now i don't know so jeffrey goes over to susu and demario because they over there talking and whatnot because she wants to get to the bottom of what was going on and maybe they can provide some perspective so she goes over to talk about her interacting with blake so she's telling them that he said that you know something was said to him when he was about to get eliminated but he wouldn't tell her exactly what hurt him and she was like my thing is this he said that he would fake it with the other ladies fake compliments and everything because he had found his one so Sue Ann was like well are you sure that's what he said because I mean when I told him what you said in the lounge he said he never said he chose you so in the confessional Jeffrey said he's been a red flag from day one but Sue Ann has on her cape okay ready to swoop in and save Blake so Sue Ann looks at Jeffrey and she goes well I asked him and he says you've never been on his list in any lounge girl they've only had one lounge so what are you talking about she said yeah well you know and this is what she said in her confessional what Jeffrey saying doesn't affect my connection with Blake I mean there are some people here that are ready to love and she's ready to lie I can't stand women like this why is she automatically the liar you don't even know this man he could just be telling you what you want to hear for him to stick around you're so easily impressed and so easily influenced it's his word against hers so what makes her the liar and him the truth teller that's what I want to know okay because none of us really know what's been going on behind closed doors but why would she just randomly throw Blake under the bus She's not even interested in him like that. So it doesn't make any sense. So baby, now they're going back and forth and forth and back. So Jeffrey's like, listen, the bottom line is I don't want a controlling man. He's a narcissist. I don't want him. I'm going to talk to whomever I choose until I find my husband. Now for me, Susu is giving pick me. Talking about she ready to help Jeffrey. So I'm trying to help you, ma'am. You're not trying to help her. Okay, you call the lady a liar when Blake told you himself that he was controlling. So how is she a liar? I'm just not understanding. It's not the logic is not logicing for me. I just feel like Jeffrey should have kept it to herself. 
So Sue Ann could see who the real Blake was for herself. You should have kept it to yourself, not said anything. And then the ladies would have eventually weeded Blake out because nobody really liked him anyway, him and his haircut. So then Tommy reemerges to speak to the men because it's time for eliminations. Baby, this season better pick up because I'm not seeing not one match. When I say not one, I mean not one. So Tommy starts with Lyndon. He's like, who do you like? He said Morgan, they have an energy and a vibe and she chose him as the sexiest man on the boat. Boy, goodbye. Mark Anthony said Jeffrey. Anthony says Cynthia. Blake says Susu. Child, of course. They said, oh, you gave her a nickname. It's in case of an emergency. <laughs> it's in case of an emergency, honey. He only saying that because she blindly following him. He don't like that lady for real, child. He ain't fooling me. Demario said Corvea. Tony said Joe and Marcia. Mm-hmm. Y'all notice he ain't say Morgan this time. That's because she said that Lyndon was the sexiest. These men so emotional. He said she knows what she wants. Blue said Joe. Well, I mean, he is her type. She says she likes some husky and tall. And I think that Blue fits the bill. Then he asked who they weren't feeling. So three men in a row said Marcia. So then Blake, old petty, vindictive self, he gonna say Jeffrey. Tell me that she's just, she's just not there. No, you're just not there. So then Blue said Jeffrey. Demario said Jeffrey because he doesn't see her being what he needs in the end. These some all emotional men. Do y'all hear me? Demario said her because she kissed Mark Anthony. Anywho, Anthony said Corvea because he doesn't like what he's been hearing. But what has she personally done to you? Have you tried to get to know her? Not I don't like what I'm hearing so she can go. Boy, anyway. So Demario said he wants to go to bat for Corvea because that's his person. So of course, roommate, aka Lyndon, he said Corvea. We knew he was going to say her. So then Tommy leaves them to it, right? He's like, all right, I'm going to leave y'all to what y'all got to do. Y'all know what time it is. So Mark Anthony and Demario start going at it about whether or not to use the lifeline. But did y'all notice how when Mark Anthony was talking, he was talking to Demario and he goes, yeah, but you never know. You could like another shorty tomorrow. His choice of words for me told me he ready to play games, honey. It told me he ready to play games. Not you could like another shorty tomorrow. I don't know. It was just something about the way that he was saying it. It was like, I don't know. It just seemed like a game to him. I don't know. I got my eye on him, child. So Lyndon was like in the confessional, if Demario is going that hard for Corvea, then it has to be real. I don't think it's real. I just think it's a numbers game. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's just me. I didn't expect him to go at it like that, but I do feel like it may be too soon to use this. Who wants to be a millionaire lifeline? I think we should wait for a little bit. Because the Skeeter can leave with Corvea if he want to continue dating her. Honey, they do it every season. If you want to continue on in the running to become her man, then go ahead and leave with her. None of y'all got a connection if you really want to be real. And I don't want my girl Marcia to go, but I'm just trying to figure out, like, who does she really like? I don't see her really liking anybody. I know this is just episode four, but it's like Marcia will go on the date because she going to eat and she going to get her meal if she don't do nothing else. But it's like, is she really connecting with anybody? see it so it's time for them to find out who's going home so they're all in a group so tommy calls tony forward he says marcia jeffrey and corvea please come forward so then he says marcia the guys feel like you're basically the homie i can't stand that why we can't have a personality and be funny and be you can still lean into your femininity and be the spouse that your man needs and be funny like do you not want to be friends with your spouse i don't understand that he said for jeffrey they feel like she puts up a shell mm -hmm. sure y'all do and for corvea she speaks before she thinks and she needs to tone it down when i tell y'all i would have packed up so good <laughs> not i speak before i think and i need to tone it down oh, okay so you guys don't like women that are assertive and say exactly what it is that they want from a man that's what i'm gathering because what does she need to tone down? I don't know. Maybe it's just me, honey. So they all standing there looking and to be continued. What a waste of an episode. Do y'all hear me? A waste. Judging from the previews, we see it's out of Marcia and Corvea because Jeffrey is out on a date or she's out having a confrontation with Demario. So we know it's not her. I'm not sure if I saw a glimpse of Marcia or not. And I don't know if it's Corvea. So maybe they use the lifeline. 
but I'm pretty much willing to bet that they used the lifeline because Corvea is a huge personality on the show. So is Marcia and so is Jeffrey. So, I mean, who we gonna have left? Cause ain't nobody else doing nothing. So that's just that on that. And that was the end of the episode. Try y'all comment down below and tell me exactly what you thought about this episode. I thought it was a dud. It didn't really give much, but I mean, maybe y'all think differently. Please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And as always, stay safe, stay blessed, spread love, not germs. Peace.